We light this candle for peace. May our lives be an expression of peacemaking. May we seek to be, to be lights in a dark world, pointing to you, Jesus, the Prince of Peace, and following you in the way of peace. Let the candle burn as a sign of peace. Amen. Worship the Lord with gladness. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Today is Palm Sunday and I have an artwork for you here by Norman Adams entitled Christ's Entry into Jerusalem. It's from the Methodist Modern Art Collection and was painted in 1991. I'm not sure that you will all like it, although I think you might agree that it does convey a sense of lightness and joy. If you look closely, perhaps not so easy on a screen, you might just pick out the pale yellow figure of Jesus on a donkey in the center, immediately to the left of the dark blue flag. Then you might detect other figures, a couple of children towards the bottom right with a tiny dog and three darker figures. There are no obvious palm branches, but lots of leaves and sunflowers. But it also includes various representations of crosses. When the painting was commissioned, the artist expressed how pleased he would be to do it. It's a wonderful subject, he said. And so with the spirit of the painting, let's sing a Palm Sunday hymn. You may not recognize the words, but the tune is that of, give me oil in my lamp with the chorus, sing Hosanna. And do join in the chorus with anything that you may have, especially if there's any children with you to rattle or shake cheerfully. And the seer will, play, I think, an introduction first. Riding into town, to the king. the child of the high is Jesus and the King of Kings. So let us pray. 
Loving Jesus, on this special day, we too welcome you at the gates of the city. A, ki a man, a king and a saviour. We welcome you amongst all of us gathered today, separated physically, but brought together by your presence and the wonders of technology made available through the world you created. Help us as we puzzle over the idea of a king riding on a donkey and being acknowledged by shouts of Hosanna, save us, when in that same city, all would later appear to turn against you. We live in a marvelous yet fragile world. And in a time of pandemic, we might still shout, save us, whilst thanking you for all the possibilities of vaccines. You offer us the opportunity of being your kingdom people, of sharing in your compassion for humankind. But we are slow to learn what that might really mean in a world of such complex relationship between individuals and nations. Please forgive our short-sightedness. Help us to focus again upon what is truly important and what our personal and realistic response to your call can be so that we might best know your companionship on the journey. And our loving God, with arms outstretched, welcomes us and says, let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now we're going to have our gospel reading, which is from Mark, which is going to be read for us. Uh, this is this reading is from uh, Mark chapter eleven, and it's verses one to eleven. And actually, it has a special place in my heart because I have actually been to the Mount of Olives. So there you go, a bit of trivia to get us started. As they approached Jerusalem, near the towns of Bethphage and Bethany. They came to the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of his disciples on ahead with these instructions. Go to the village there ahead of you. As soon as you get there, you will find a colt tied up that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. And if someone asks you why you are doing that, tell them that the master needs it and will send it back at once. So they went and found a colt out in the street tied to the door of a house. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders asked them, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered just as Jesus had told them, and the men let them go. They brought the colt to Jesus, threw their cloaks over the animal, and Jesus got on. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches in the fields and spread them on the road. The people who were in front and those who followed behind began to shout, praise God, God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord. God bless the coming kingdom of King David, our father. Praise God. Jesus entered Jerusalem, went into the temple and looked round at everything. But since it was already late in the day, he went out to Bethany with the 12 disciples. And now we're going to sing again, as long as you're muted, that is. Um, ride on, ride on, but it's not the traditional ride on that we usually sing on Palm Sunday. These has, this one has some modern words, but the tune is the same. 
So do concentrate on the on what you see on the screen on the words. Thank you. And now we come to our second reading, which again is going to be read to us as, and is from Paul's letter to the church at Philippi. Thank you. The attitude you should have is the one that Jesus Christ had. He always had the nature of God but he did not think that by force he should try to become equal with God. <clears throat> Instead of this, of his own free will, he, will he, he gave up all he had and took the nature of a servant. He became like man and appeared in human likeness. He was humble and walked the path of obedience all the way to death his death on the cross. For this reason, God raised him to the highest place above and gave him the name that is greater than any other name. And so in honor of the name of Jesus, all beings in heaven on earth and in the world below will fall on their knees and all will, be op will openly proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. I was suggesting that if there are any any children listening or or uh, are around, they might like to take the opportunity during the sermon to draw their picture of Jesus' arrival in Jerusalem and we'll see if it might be possible to share them um, later on. Or if you haven't already done so, uh, if they haven't already done so, they can make it their paper palm cross for the last hymn. And now may God bless all our words and thoughts. Amen. Something over 40 years ago, the big office supplies company, 3M, were carrying out research to find some strong glue. But all that resulted was a weak substance that didn't last. They gave up. But about six years later, an employee recognized the use for it. He was a church choir member and suddenly realized that this non-permanent glue could be used for detachable bookmarks in his hymn book so that he could find his place securely. It caught on. And now the ubiquitous post-it notes are with us. 
The big bosses, it seems, had missed the point of their new blue because it hadn't matched their expectations. And I dare say that many of us at school were quite often told when answering exam questions and carrying out essay type assignments that we had missed the point. We had spotted a keyword in the question or instructions and then written down everything we knew about the subject without checking what was really needed. So we should perhaps be more sympathetic to the crowd welcoming Jesus into Jerusalem and indeed, and indeed his accompanying disciples if they too missed the point. They were seeking something, somebody, strong like the glue that 3M was seeking. It's not completely clear, but possible that this all coincided with the festival of Passover, the time to remember how God had released his people from the tyranny of rule in Egypt. Yes, though we also ought to recall that many Egyptians were slain in the process and that the Israelites became long-term long migrants in the desert. In Jesus' time, God's people were suffering again, this time under the rule of Rome. They wanted their freedom back. And I wonder if that sounds a bit familiar at the moment. It may be that Jesus was anticipating this mood and had, had summer how already prearranged to ride into the city when nearly everyone else would be on foot. The arrival of a king, humble and riding on a donkey, as the prophet Zechariah had proclaimed, not as conqueror who would be on a horse. If it was about freedom from Roman rule, then we can understand that sense of colour and jubilation expressed in Norman Adams' painting. And we might, with our hindsight, see it that, of course, it was a greater freedom that Jesus was to offer. Those who had followed him through his three years of ministry might have been gaining some inkling of what this was, though he was yet to manage the trick question put to him by the Pharisees about whether to pay taxes to Caesar or not. There was still a lot of misunderstanding. Jesus, though, already knew that he would be in for a difficult time with the Jewish senior authorities, which could end in death. If they were not willing to listen anew to what is meant about loving God and loving neighbor. And so it's good for us too, to remind ourselves not to miss the point of Jesus coming to Jerusalem we can too easily slip from the waving of palm branches to the joy of Easter resurrection without really contemplating what came between and what it is all about. But the Apostle Paul helps us out when he shares with the Christians at Philippi some words about Jesus that are thought to come from a hymn at the time. He was in the form of God, yet he made no claim to equality with God, but made himself nothing, assuming the form of a slave, bearing the human likeness and sharing the human lot. And it's worth noting that the Roman custom of death by crucifixion was reserved for slaves 
the extreme sort of abasement. The events of Palm Sunday are often referred to as the triumphal entry. And in some ways this is true, but we too can miss what the triumph was then and in everyday living today. As I was beginning to think about this service, I came across an article in a magazine written in 2013. It was by a journalist who had been in an overseas country for several weeks doing some work for a documentary film. And I don't want to say where it was. His daily walk to work through this, a city took him along a busy road where there were street vendors on one side and on the other was an area of building rubble occupied by squatters. One day there was a man in ragged clothing lying on his back on the ground, looking pretty ill, but still moving. Represented perhaps by the beggars in the newer version of the Ride On hymn that we've just sung. The journalist went and asked the street vendors how this man could be taken to hospital, but no one wanted to know. This went on for a few days and the man was still there, just about alive, but looking even worse. The journalist then spoke to a local social worker who was staying at the same hostel as himself. This social worker pointed out that there, there was no such thing as an ambulance service. If he took the man to hospital in his own car and he died on the way there, he would be accused of murder. And if anyone took someone to hospital, they would then be liable for the admission fee and all medical costs which certainly explains why the street vendors weren't interested. So our journalists tried going to the police, but was told that they would only get involved if the man was already dead. In despair, the journalists and the social worker finally did get the man to hospital where he received very basic treatment to keep him alive. The journalist called for five days to pay the fees owing. But on the sixth day, the man died and would probably be buried in a common grave. The journalist had been like a modern Good Samaritan, but then began to have doubts about his actions. Had he just prolonged the man's agony if he had died on the roadside, his family might have then claimed him and received support from friends, and perhaps a little money for at least a basic funeral. Had the journalist's actions denied him this little dignity? Had he missed the point of how of necessity life is carried on in that country. It's often been a way of deciding what to do about a social problem to ask, well, what would Jesus do? But that can be difficult to resolve in a modern context. Would we be better ask a person talking about this, what would you do in circumstances? Or what would I do? Of course, it seems right to offer compassion as the Good Samaritan did after all. And as Jesus certainly did on many occasions. But is there a choice about the form that that should take? It's something that humanitarian agencies struggle with. They can't just tell other governments what to do, 
even handing over money. But work can be done to support local communities for what they see as their immediate needs. And our contribution might be to at least be aware, to listen and learn, to understand and get the point. We won't always get it right, but the Jesus, the utter obedience and death that Jesus, by which Jesus achieved the reconciliation of humanity to God in ways which are still beyond our understanding, means that forgiveness is freely offered when sought. The purpose of our annual specific reflection upon the cross and the resurrection is surely not just to see them from the perspective of those who compiled our scriptures, but to translate them into our daily living from where we are and not to miss the point for ourselves and then act upon it. And God will surely bless us in the seeking. So have a meaningful Easter and a cause to rejoice. Amen. So do we have any notices? I think there's one coming on the screen. We have notices, but I was going to do it um, a little later, if it's okay, or do you want me to do it yes. now? I can do it now. No, that's fine. They can be at the end. That's right. Mm -hmm. Just a notice about the next, next Sunday service. Thank you. And so we come to our, our prayers. Loving God, we stand at the gates of your kingdom. You offer us a welcome. We remember those who struggle to find the happiness you offer. For those who find it, but with pain and suffering. And for those who deny its existence. And so we pray for those places where autocratic rule denies freedom of speech and belief. And we pray for the rights of humankind, whatever their color, creed or sexu sexuality. As people, we need to treat each other as we would wish to be treated. We pray for places where conflict causes people to become migrants losing security and dignity as human beings and often finding a culture of hostility is what welcomes them. And we pray for those who've never experienced the love of family and find it hard to offer love or receive it themselves. We pray for those whose poverty for whatever reason, denies their independence. And we pray for children in Yemen and Syria, living in terrible conditions. And again, for the situation in Myanmar, which seems to be getting worse. And so we ask your blessing upon all the agencies who work to assist people to help themselves to gain the fullness of life as a human being. And for those who work as well to bring the love of Christ into their lives, regardless of culture or creed. 
at this time, we remember especially all those working to bring relief from the COVID pandemic through medical care and its support workers and the politicians and scientists and others we may forget. And pray for the, a greater resolution to spread the, the vaccines more equitably throughout the world. And so we pray for all those who are affected themselves by the virus or the loss of loved ones, but not forgetting others whose suffering may have been marginalized this past year. And within our community, we remember particularly those that we know. Bernard, Richard, Robert, Jenny Marr, Sheila, Vicky and Jenny Eakins, and also Margaret Doyle's family, Pascal and his family, and his country of Nigeria. And we give you thanks for Tessia and Faneri, who are to have another baby, a boy in May. And we each will have our own friends and family that we care about. And we link to them now in silence. Now let's join all our prayers in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And our final hymn is the servant king and now is the time to hold up the crosses which you may have made or any palm crosses that you might have found from from other years
this week, may the same mind be in us as is in Christ Jesus, so that on Friday we may stand at the foot of the cross, trusting that we have begun again to find the point of it all and can go forward to truly celebrate the joy of Easter morning and the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us all now and always. Amen. Thank you.